Tonight, Flynn's mayor opening up about the water crisis that put her on the national stage and put her constant contact with an A-list Oscar winner. The mayor is also talking about President Trump and a recent planned visit to her city that apparently was canceled at the last minute. We bring in our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, who's live uh, in Flint tonight. Hank, she has seen a lot now. She certainly has, Devin and Karen. Listen, we spoke with the mayor for more than an hour. She was open, she was honest, she was realistic. The bottom line is the problems here in Flint are going to drag on for a number of years. The struggle continues in Flint, and so too does the work being done by Flint's mayor, Karen Weber. You know, we're removing the lead service lines, right. the galvanized lines, and so that's going to put it where we continue to, to be on filtered water or bottled water for probably about another three years. Three more years, at least. Hard to believe. Elected right before the crisis made national headlines, Weaver entered into a mess. It has been nonstop ever since. One day she's in Flint, the next day on every network newscast, and then taking the stage at the Democratic Convention. Was it overwhelming? Probably if I stopped to think about it. And I tried not to think about it too much because then that's exactly what would happen. It would be overwhelming. The mayor's gotten help along the way, the federal government, the state, and some big name celebrities. One in particular, who cold called the mayor's office last spring. I heard her say, well, you know, she can't get to the phone right now. And then Cher must have left the message. And she said, is this Cher, Cher? And I guess she said, yes. And she said, wait just a minute. Cher donated thousands of bottles of water to the city, and she's regularly in touch with Weaver. In fact, she just called over the weekend. Ever since that first call, uh, we had a connection, and she has stayed in touch. Uh, she's been, you know, she came here, and she has, I mean, she's always picking up the phone to call and say, what's going on? I'm going to send some more uh, because I understand you all are still on bottled and filtered water. During the race for the White House, both Secretary Clinton and then candidate Trump made stops in the vehicle city. Both said fixing Flint would be a top priority. Have you spoken to him since he was sworn in? I have not. Anybody from the administration? Well, you know, we, we thought he was going to be coming here. That was probably about a month ago. Okay. And I'm not quite sure what happened because the, um, the um, fire and police chiefs were contacted as, you know, the normal right. procedure. But then all of a sudden they ended up going to, I'm not sure if it was Grand Rapids, but somewhere on the west side of the state. Okay. And we haven't heard anything else. Okay. An important programming note for you, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, failure in Flint, the crisis continues. The WDIV team will be live here, a one-hour special in Flint. Devin, Kimberly, Karen Drew, Kevin Dietz, myself, taking a look at the problem in the city, the solutions, in-depth conversations, and also much more from the mayor. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, she's talking about her relationship with the governor, revealing whether she believes he should be charged and also telling us what grade she would give him for the work he's done here in Flint. A couple of notes regarding the interview you just saw. She's optimistic uh, that the president will make his way here to Flint very soon. And, and she also talked about Cher, as you heard. Uh, she says it's very strange, but at this point, she considers Cher a good friend. <laughs> We're live here in Flint. Hank Winchester, back to you. You know, Hank, I remember talking to Mayor Weaver just before she gave her speech at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia last summer. She couldn't believe then uh, at the company that she was keeping. It's just, it's been that way week by week by week. I think she still finds herself a little surprised at, at her life now. Yeah, I think it's hard for her to wrap her head around it. And, you know, talking about that speech, Devin, we talked about that yesterday. I was asking her about how nervous she must have been. She said she was fine delivering the speech, but then when she got off stage, she realized she left her glasses on right. the podium. Right. And at that point, it was just too late to go back. <laughs> <laughs> you can't run back and sneak them away. Yeah, all right, Hank.